Good morning, guys. Well, this place comes observationally marked on the moon. Last time we were talking about uh, compensation of uh, bubbles of Earth, or in general, compensation of a uh, power of Earth whose uh, transfer function is something like this. This is, could be a bug boost, the DCM, or this mode, could be a um, boost DCM. Basically, all DCM have a 1, 4, 1, 0. But we will see that this same uh, shape of the transfer function, the same kind of, of the transfer function, is also for uh, many current motor systems. Um, this is 1, 4, 1, 0. Unfortunately, this game changes with different parameters, like the input voltage and the uh, load, this pulse frequency changes with the load in the bubble convert of DCM. This zero is due to the output capacitor, the electronic capacitor, and it does not change too much, but we don't know what, where it is, because depending on what kind of a capacitor you use, it could be a little bit uh, higher or lower in frequency. What we have, we found that, that the, the most critical conditions uh, to design uh, this uh, compensation <coughs> is the A max and uh, the other condition are not This is only for, especially uh, many more beings, this is only for what to this year. Each converter could have a different conditions. What we want to get uh, as a low gain is uh, a transfer function that is something like this. This is my P loop gain or return ratio that I want to obtain from this uh, system. What I have, what I want, and uh, the difference between these two transfer functions is what I have to provide with my copy section. Do you remember it? Yeah? Um, the only number that I have to specify for the uh, for the loop gain, the crucial frequency, Fc. And for a voltage mode, Fc must uh, lie the range between um, one tenth of the switching frequency and one sixth of the switching frequency. You don't go higher than one sixth of the switching frequency. You can go below one tenth, but you lose just the quarters. Bug boost the DCM, and we have an FC, frequency switching frequency, divided by 10 up to 6 or something like this. And we saw how to design the compensator, what is the uh, schematic we have to use for our compensator, etc. what we have to provide in order to transform this uh, white transfer function into this purple transfer function we have to hammer it and we have to add a zero here, a pole for here and the transfer functions that they need for compensation something like that well this is I, I didn't measure the distance between the two curves so this is far too long if you go in a a real uh, role, but uh, just the shape is something like that. Okay, it's so possible. And uh, we saw that uh, our transfer function for compensation can be implemented using a circuit like this. This is what comes from the upper bottom of my. Uh, power states and this goes to the the arrow voltage that goes to the meter generator. Okay, it's possible. Mm -hmm. We learn how to design uh, how to choose the uh, component for this uh, circuit. And what we obtain is something like that. We have our power state With V0 or here, 
Actually, for the bug boost, we have one extra small uh, complication because uh, uh, gain for my uh, power stage in the bug boost is negative. So we need uh, one extra version to avoid the positive feedback. But let's suppose that this power stage is something like this with the positive gain. We come back, we go to the compensator over here, make it positive. Does it 
And this addition, this uh, RTC, does that change uh, the loop gain of the system? Does it change my phase margin? Does it change my uh, crossover frequency? And so on. Well, the answer is no. Because, let's look at this OPEC. The original OPEC. Compensation. This OPEC is something like this. I have here the impedance of this Z2. Here there is RDC connected to ground, inverted, non-inverted, VRF over here, and from here I get R1, and here I have V0. In order to determine, to analyze the loop gain, the mix stable, non stable, whereas the crossover frequency and so on, I need to analyze a path that starts from any point, that takes a full trip around, a full path around, or here, and comes back to the same point. This is the loop that I was uh, worried about. Compensation, crossover, stability, phase margin, etc. And adding this RDC does not change this one. Okay. Because, if you look over here, how much is the gain between the error mode is divided by the output mode, having having added the RDC. How much is this gain? Error uh, mode is divided by output mode. Minus R1 over Z2. <coughs> Did you ever see this circuit? What's that? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <coughs> and the gain between the error uh, voltage and the output voltage is just negative Z2 divided by R1. RDC has nothing to do with this gain because this is, who is called this uh, node? It's a drum. How is it in Italian? No, okay. don't say massa di qua. Massa di qua is a twice up, is a two errors together and two words you make two errors. Because ground is not massa. Ground is reflex, zero volt in Italian. And the second is virtual. Virtual does not mean virtual most of the times. It means Defined, practically, basically, as is. I am virtually there, it's come as a fossil. Uh, it's not, it's not uh, virtual. Virtual reality is not that. Mm. And even worse, if you want to call what is here inside between the negative inverting and non inverting input, and you call it uh, virtual short or something like this, is a good way to make big mistakes. Because if you call it virtual short, you say these two voltages are the same. Okay, under some conditions it's true. And if it is a short, you have the temptation, the strong temptation, to have current flowing through it. Because it's true that there is no voltage over here, but if there is a short, a, a, volt, a current can flow through a short without making any voltage drop. Don't say this, please. This is preference voltage, or if you want to be very accurate in 95% of the cases, you say, Negative input follows the positive input voltage. Negative inverting input voltage follows. Not is equal to, but follows, because you have an assignment the positive input voltage and so on. Anyway, this is an error. So the gain from this chain, from this input to the other is just R2, negative R2 over R1 or whatever are these resistances. And here is the same story. The gain, even if I add RDC, does not change because it's still Z2 over R1. So all what I told you about the compensation, crossover, uh, etc., is still there. Now I have a, an input over here, the reference, a signal input, DC constant, and this input has a gain. And in order to find out the relationship between the output voltage and the rear we can go. This reference input has a gain that is negative, is positive plus R1 plus RTC divided by RTC. This is the standard non inverting uh, of N. Okay, so far so good.
However, adding RTC has an effect, has an impact on this subject. And the story is like this. And in some one in one kind of case I got burned by this RTC because there is an, uh, this un I, there was this unexpected for me at that time effect and then I learned it and I said, okay, never again. That is this one. Let's consider in this system, this is just a simplified installation, it's not a complete the uh, the precise installation, but it gives you an idea of what's going on. Let's consider just this open. Wait that. This attempt must provide you with uh, a transfer function that is uh, what we derive uh, as a difference between uh, what they want and what they get. And this op-amp is a feedback system. This op-amp has a local feedback here around. You see, it comes from the output of the op-amp and comes over here. And it's just this local feedback that gives me exactly the shape uh, the transfer function I want to compensate myself. So, I want to study how well these op-amp can provide me with the transfer function I want. Negative positive R1 RC and here we have Z2. VE, and I know that VE, that will work, divided by V0, V0 is a beam, the compensation, should give me a transfer function that is something like this. And uh, I already told you that this transfer function does not depend on RDC. Well, not really true, because what's the loop gain of this single? Elemental stage of this uh, open, this compensator. Don't look at the complete system, just focus on this open, the compensator. If you have to find the loop gain of this stuff, uh, you have to start, for example, from uh, here, you take a look around, a look around, and then you come back. And the loop gain is something like AD, the differential gain of the open times the beta factor, the feedback factor. What's the feedback factor? Well, the feedback factor is just the, the voltage you get on the negative input, on the inverting input, starting from the output voltage. And so it's just a voltage divider. But this voltage divider is made of uh, R1 parallel RDC divided by R1 parallel RDC because when you consider the loop, local loop gain, if you consider loop gain just of your compensator, R1 and RBC are in parallel. What happens if you put here an RBC that is smaller, smaller, and smaller? That is a very simple trick. Is what happens if you take the limit for RBC going to zero? That means you want a very huge, high DC gain. Well, if RDC goes to zero, what happens? The loop gain goes to zero. Because RDC going to zero just uh, knows the numerator and your loop gain goes to zero. And if your loop gain goes to zero, you don't have a closed loop uh, feedback system anymore. You don't have loop gain anymore and you don't get a distance of function anymore. Well, RDC never goes to zero, but let's suppose that you need an output voltage that is 400 volts. And your RDC is, for example, 2.5 volts. Well, going from 2.5 volts to 400 volts requires a gain factor that is... How much is 400 divided by 2.5? 180. 60. 60 times. So you have to use an RDC that is quite smaller than R1. It means that the loop gain of this uh, compensator goes down. It means that the bandwidth of this compensator, only of the compensator, this is a what was it, that's, uh, electronic amplicator problem. 
the look the bandwidth of this compensator becomes smaller and smaller and it is smaller than what you want to get to. And so you get screwed up by uh, this unexpected system. For there are a few uh, ICs that uh, are designed for high voltage uh, uh, out of serving like this uh, 400 volt. And in this case, RDC, uh, the DLF is not 2.5 volt, it's something like uh, 7.5 volt or 10 volt or so. And they, these uh, op amps have a very wide bandwidth, to gain bandwidth product. Anyway, RDC does not change the Z2 over R1 ratio, so my feedback compensation is uh, still the same, provided that uh, this RDC is not uh, decreasing too much the bandwidth of this uh, compensator. Okay, so far so good. Oh, I told you that in this schematics, I remember I told you that VRF is my input. It's the reference input that is amplified, gets amplified and gives me uh, the output voltage. If instead of a constant, a DC voltage over right here, you put here a varying signal, you will have a varying signal at the output. When you tweak your uh, PC, your hack your PC, and you try to increase the uh, to overclock it, you have to overclock and increase the, the CPU frequency, but you, have, you also have to increase the supply voltage for your CPU. And in order to increase your uh, supply voltage, the schematic is something like this for your uh, power supply, your CPU power supply, and what you change is just a VRAF. You increase VRAF and you get an increase in the output voltage. This will be, no wait, I called up to last week something different as V in. What was V in up to last week? The source voltage. The source voltage, the input power voltage. And what is V in over here? Power stage. Power stage. Power stage. Here we have our V in coming in and supplying the power stage, but not only, but V in must come here as well because I need to supply my sawtooth generator, I need to supply my comparator that is here inside. My V in must also supply this uh, uh, voltage source, my V in, this uh, op amp, my V in must also, must also supply this uh, voltage reference that is basically a band gap uh, circuit and so on. So, it's a different point of view. After last week I was focusing on the power path. So, this V in was uh, the voltage giving me power, the input power. Now, I'm focusing on the control of the signal part, and so my VD, the input voltage for this circuit is this one. But this signal, this is power. Okay? So far, so good. There is still one detail that is important to analyze, and this one. Because this uh, uh, 
subvolt starts from zero volt. It means that your subvolt generator should start from zero volt. And if you have only one supply voltage, it's very difficult to go down to zero. Usually, if you have an op amp that has only a single supply from zero to positive voltage, the output voltage cannot reach zero, exactly zero. And in this case, it's not an op amp, it's something more complicated. It's an uh, integrator plus a uh, uh, compatible, etc. This is difficult. What we can get, the best we can get, is something like this. My circles, my actual circles is. something like this. The amplitude is still about 3 volts or 5 volts or 1.5 volts, whatever you want. But the minimum does not go to The minimum could be, I don't know, 1 volt, uh, one volt probably is too much. 0.5 volts or so, it depends. It's not so important. The problem is that okay, here I have an offset. This is my input is translated up. Shift it up by a fixed voltage. What happens in my comparator over here, my WM, BWM moderator? Well, if my exotic goes up, it seems, and it's true, it seems that my input signal, instead of getting a large duty cycle when it's compared with the white waveform, being compared with the actual red waveform, gives me a uh, um, two-decider that is smaller. Now, that is an, an offset error. Okay, you like offset errors? In this case, for the noise, it's a... Uh this case, for the noise, would be okay, but noise errors are noise errors. If uh, this amplitude uh, is three volts, and this offset is one volt, you have an offset error that is about one third of your signal. Do you like uh, an offset error like this? Uh, it can, this type of error can, uh, can give uh, uh, an output uh, error at the CD state. So, but if, if we have a second type uh, controller, I do, yes. Maybe like one. Yes, you're right. Your recording is right. Because uh, this offset, in general, could give me an output error that is just an offset. Mm -hmm. Instead of having a given voltage, you have a voltage that is less than what they mm -hmm. expect. Mm -hmm. But what is it here in front of it? Mm -hmm. There is an, uh, a circuit that has a very high DC gain. This is an integrator, basically. It's uh, control-wise, if you talk like a control engineer, it's a type 1 system. Mm -hmm. And if you move this offset back to what the output of your system, because this is remember it's been on, if you have an output voltage of it, uh, offset voltage over here and you move it back, you have to divide it by the gain of this stage. How much is the gain of this stage in DC? Very high. Very high. 80 dBs, 100 dBs mm -hmm. or so. So when you have this volt and you will divide it by the DC gain of this stage, this is one reason why I want a type 1 compensator, a type 1 system, type 2 compensator, just uh, there is some confusion between type 1, that is control guys, control engineers, and type 2, that is power engineers. When you have an integrator over here, you divide this offset voltage by a very high voltage, <coughs> a very high gain, like 100 dBs, 100 dBs. And your 1 volt over here is reduced to much is one volt divided by one hundred dBs. Thank my Who cares? Okay, so possible. Okay. I still have a one question for you. Why in a system that is basically a DC amplifier, because this is a DC amplifier basically, why in a system that is a DC amplifier? I want a wide bandwidth. Remember, uh, this is what I get from the power stage, this is what I want, and my focus, my goal, is to get an FC that is as high as possible.
possible, but not too high, otherwise uh, noise, uh, instabilities, etc. Why do I want a high sort of frequency, a wide bandwidth amplifier, if I have to amplify only a DC? Because we want a system that is uh, very fast to recover the... Uh, I want a system that is fast to recover from what? Hydrox of the, for example, the mean uh, variation. Variation, of Change, variation. variation. Because it's true that my input voltage is constant, but my output load is not constant. It can go from 1 amp to 50 amps in uh, zero, basically, almost zero. So, if this is my power supply, and uh, this is my V0 output voltage, with a load, and I change suddenly my load. Oops. The output load is V0 in time domain. Instead of being a real, true, non existent DC voltage, when I close my load, when I increase my load, this is the load, when I increase my load here, Get more power, more output cover, the output voltage goes down immediately, no way. And this height, this end, is not controlled by the, by the loop, because the loop has a finite band. So when I apply a step at the output, output voltage goes down, current step at the output, output voltage goes down, and is controlled only by the output capacitor. The output capacitor is the only one that controls the, this step because the feedback has no time to react. Feedback is low, feedback has a time constant. So, this comes down due to the control only, really, only by the output capacitor, and with some time, comes up. And it comes up exactly the same value that before, because I have a control-wise type 1 system. And when I release my load, my load goes down again, what happens to the output voltage? steps up and comes down. This time constant, tau, of this exponential uh, behavior, time constant is equal to 1 over 2 pi C in a first order system. And this is a, a good uh, approximation of first order system because I have a 90 degrees of phase margin, so that basically a first order system. And you see why I want a, a very the largest as possible FC frequency because a large FC for solar frequency gives me a short time. That means this recovers quite fast. Okay? We will measure it in the lab. You will see that in a buck uh, converter, this uh, behavior is quite uh, standard. In a uh, buck boost, uh, you will see differences because in a buck boost, uh, the time constant changes uh, with the, uh, the load, so you will have one will be faster than the other, but we'll see. Oh. There is a case, quite, uh, quite common, <coughs> why, well, this kind of behavior of response to a transient, the load transient, is not uh, desired. You don't like it. And the reason is this one. So there is a case where I don't want such a kind of a response. This is enough. T. If I have a type 1 system, I get, oh, I exaggerate this amplitude, but I get it. This is a type 1 system, that means it's integrated inside the loop area. If I look at the maximum change from here to here, I see that this maximum change is quite the highest. Change positive comes back, change in negative direction comes back. If instead of having a type 1 system, I design a type 0 system, type 0 system could be something like this. I have a quite high a little bit higher than, than the, the right uh, value, output voltage, oh sorry, lower output voltage, right here. I release the load, the output voltage jumps, jumps up, and then it comes back 
So I wanted that it's not exactly as before, because this is not the type 1, this is a type 0, so I have a steady state. I get this one. Here, I apply again my load. My voltage jumps down and recovers just a little bit and stays down. Do you prefer the blue or the red response from a power supply? Give me the standard uh, answer for uh, it. Mm -hmm. It depends. It depends on what. It depends on what kind of uh, uh, load that you have. It depends on how you define good output voltage. If you look at the integral of the error, absolute integral of the absolute value of the error, the red waveform is better because you have just short period of time to small areas when you have an arrow, what is that? On the other hand, on the blue waveform, you have large period of time, periods of time where you have a constant error, a constant DC error. So if you look at uh, how much error uh, integrated in time do I get from the type 1 and type 0 system, type 1 is better. But that's not the mathematical stuff. After my power supply, there is not a mathematician with a calculator making it to us. After my power supply, there is a load, a real load. And the real load could be uh, unhappy to get this kind of high changes, high voltage changes, large voltage changes with respect to the steady state. For example, let's consider a CPU of your laptop, of your uh, desktop. You can have that this step, this last step, brings, bring, this last step bring your uh, supply voltage outside the range for your CPU to work correctly. If you adopt a type 0 compensator like this, you have a constant error, but this error is such a way that the total change of your voltage stays within a band, a voltage band, a voltage range that is compatible with your CPU. And don't say, but this is, this is a short period of time, so it might be a too big a deal, because this short period of time could be, well, let's say one microsecond, it's a very, uh, it's a very uh, uh, optimistic uh, uh, assumption. Actually, it's more than one microsecond. It's far more than one microsecond. But let's say one microsecond. One microsecond is a very short time. Well, how many operations, how many instructions, how many clock cycles does your CPU run in during one microsecond? No. Thousand, thousand operations, thousand instructions. Okay, if you if you make an error in one of these thousand operations, you are done. So for uh, supplying um, CPU in some cases, or in many cases, I would say, a type 0 system is uh, preferred because you have total peak to peak change of the output voltage in this model. You can stay within the, ra the range of the correct uh, voltages for your CPU. If you use a type 1, you see that <coughs> things can go outside this band of a good. Uh, this range of good voltages, and you could introduce errors in your uh, uh, computations. Mm. Okay? All the designs we will uh, make in this uh, uh, class will be type 1 systems, integrated with this kind of complex sector. But uh, remember that you can have these uh, requirements in for some, <coughs> for some uh, designs. Professor, one question. But with type 1, we have no possibility to clamp uh, the spike as with the um. uh, Yeah, good question. If I uh, use a type 1 system, may I clamp in some way these uh, spikes? No, there is no way as far as I know. Yes, there is a way, but it's, uh, it's complicated. Because these cannot be done by the compensator itself. Compensator has a time constant that is uh, microseconds long. So before that, uh, this jump is sensed by the system, sensed by the compensator, and uh, an action is taken to correct for it, it's, uh, it's uh, too long, it's too, too late, it comes uh, too late, there is too much time going by. 
there is a way to compare, to clamp this uh, uh, system with a type 1 on my side. And uh, it's done like this. Good question. I have to go, this the, I have to go to a bottom water. But this problem occurs with, uh, the problem occurs with bottom water. Um, That is your arrow of the tile. We then run moderator and we go to driver. My switch. Let's suppose that uh, I want a type 1 system because I want to have a um, zero error, zero DC error, steady state, and I don't want this kind of uh, Peaks, I want to clamp these peaks. <laughs> no way to go to here because this uh, has a limited uh, frequency band. This is a limited uh, uh, crossover frequency. And so the time response uh, is long. What I can do is to put here on the other a compactor that senses, for example, when the voltage goes down quickly and too much. And when this compactor, compactor is a fast system, it's not an amplifier that has falls as a band. Mm -hmm. Compactor is something that in 50 nanoseconds or less reacts. 10 nanoseconds, 5 nanoseconds, depends on your technology, reacts. So when this compactor senses that the output voltage is going down too much, it says, if there's emergency, I have to correct for it. And correcting for it means I have here another switch that is closed. <coughs> Connecting the input voltage directly to the output voltage. Well, there are no ideal switches, as you can imagine. Switches, uh, have, switches have a resistance, etc. But when you work the switch, you boost immediately the current to the output, and so you clamp, you limit your depth in the output voltage. Okay? And what for? What about this uh, P positive P when you remove the load? You have the same story. You put another compactor that senses if the output voltage goes above what you want, and this compactor acts on a switch that is in parallel to the output, and so it clamps the output. It uh, imposes a load, an extra load on your output and it limits this uh, positive uh, oil voltage. Cost a little bit more. This can be done, and uh, there are other, other tricks that you can do on a buck converter, can be done in a discrete buck converter, and they start to apply to integrated buck converters. Integrated means everything is inside your IC. When I say, in this class, usually, integrated buck converter, it means there is a nice C that has inside it control part, so to uh, PWM, uh, compensator, reference voltage, and power switch and the diode. And you have to provide uh, uh, outside the IC the inductor and capacitors. This is what I mean when I say integrated uh, control. But uh, nowadays they are trying to, in to integrate all the buck converter, including inductor and including the capacitors, on a chip. So your IC comes with all inside, including the power supply. And in order to get the inductors, they use the uh, bonding wires or bonding wire to, because a few nano angles means a few millimeters of uh, bonding wire. And the capacitors are made uh, using all the available layers of metals and uh, on the PCB on the IC. And they can have uh, capacitances up to 10 nanofarads. They waste a lot of area. They can have inductances of 5 millimeters, just a piece of wire that goes above the circuit. And in this case, this is an important problem because they have no output capacitance. 10 nanofarads are the output capacitance. If your load goes from 0 or 100 milliamps to 1 amp, you have a huge hole in your power supply voltage. So, they have to use these tricks, but nevertheless they don't work anyway. 
Mm -hmm. I just revised the paper these days, uh, presenting exactly the solution, and I said, okay, on your simulation is okay, but it does not work in reality because blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But if you correct this point, probably it would work. Okay? Is that the answer? Yeah. In discrete domain, you can do it. It's quite rare because in discrete domain you can have plenty of capacity capacitances, etc. In the integrated domain, they start to do it. I never saw it before, everything integrated, but they, they try. They have problems though. <coughs> okay, so that's a good. Let's move forward. What's the next step? Current mode. Current mode? No, too far away. There will be current mode next week. Ah, we learned. Uh, eh? Next week, not that far away. Yes, <laughs> yeah, because in between there are still many more subjects. Uh, we learned how to compensate a <coughs> bug boost or a DCM. Any DCM has the same transfer function. But we want to learn how to compensate a boost or a bug boost CCM because a boost and a bug boost CCM, the only way to compensate is going to crossover far below the right of plane zero. There is no way to compensate for But there is still the bug converter. Bug converter, what is mode? Bug converter, what is mode? Has a transfer function. It's something like this, two process conjugate poles coming down, as long as it's negative, it's 40 degrees per decade, here it goes to zero, and we go something like this. Are these poles at fixed frequency or moving frequency? Variable. Yeah, variable. Converter, these poles have a fixed frequency. They change a Q factor, but the frequency is fixed. And the fixed frequency is 1 over 2 pi square root of C. Then we have a 0, right or left plane 0? Right. right. No, not a good guy. Left at, left at plane frequency. This is the output capacitor of zero. And this frequency is 1 over 2 pi output capacitance times the ESR. We don't know exactly what is this zero, but more or less, uh, according to the technology of our capacitor, the quality, how much uh, money we spend for our capacitor, we can have something in the range from 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz or so. If we go to for um, temporal capacitors, the this zero goes up by a factor of two, we can get 20, 30 kilohertz. If we use uh, organic electrolyte, uh, this, uh, here, this zero can go a little bit higher. So anyway, we want to let know, depending on our choice of the The DC gain for a voltage mode, continuous conduction mode, the buck converter is B. Just like B. And if you want to include the regular feeder the regular gain, it's being divided by the triangle. That is the peak to peak amplitude of our sound source. So this is what we want, we get from our power stage, and we are lucky we like this uh, transfer function because these two poles don't change it. They are fixed or that. They change the Q factor, but frequency stays there. This zero does not move too much. I don't know exactly where it is, but it's reasonably now. The only thing changing in this transfer uh, function is the total gain, the DC gain. That means all these curves moves up and down uh, without uh, shifting left or right. So if the input voltage increases, I will get something like this. All this curve is shifted up by the same amount. And uh, this transfer function, I want to compensate. It. I want to get uh, a loop gain. This is a buck. Voltage mode 
CCM, two copies contour poles, one left of plane zero, and I want to obtain a loop plane that is something like this. This is my T that I want. And as you will, the only number I have to specify is frequency FC equals switch frequency divided by 6 to 10 times. If you want to decrease, increase this number, divide by it by 20, it's okay, you lose performances, your system becomes slower to respond.